can't lie there. <laughs> Hello and welcome to today's Confessions of a Global Changemaker show. I'm, today I'm here with a very dear friend. We've known each other for a long time. I've watched this incredible entrepreneur totally crush it in so many different areas of her business. In fact, she's excelled even, I think, the business that she started with and has gone into lots of other different things because I think once you're an entrepreneur, you have a taste for it and you can't really stop. And that is true of this incredible woman that sits before you right now. Sally, welcome to today's show. Hello, how are you all? It's great to be here. I've seen your show so many times. It's just like I'm, I'm, I'm on TV. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm really excited about having you on the show because we we've like we've known each other for so many years and we've come together and then we've gone separate ways and we've come together and we've gone separate ways and every time we catch up with each other there's just so much. I think the last time we caught up with each other was maybe about six weeks ago or eight weeks yeah. ago in Brighton when I was speaking at an event in Brighton and you of course have your event coming up as well and uh, you're taking the stuff that you're doing online as well so exciting times for you the pivot is a great change absolutely and I think I think as entrepreneurs you you have to just keep moving don't you you have to move in with the time yeah. and yeah. this the corona period we're in this lockdown it's it's sort of like a new challenge it's a horrible thing to be going through but it's yeah. at the same time it's a new challenge it's an opportunity to try new things and do new things pivot your business change the ways yeah. that you, you would normally do and it, it it's it's quite some of it's quite exciting how fast we're having to react and respond to things so I've quite enjoyed some of that bits. I don't like being locked in the house, but I quite enjoy some of the challenges <laughs> business-wise that it's actually thrown at. It's like, I didn't realize I could do that. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. been an interesting six weeks, Sammy, since we last met. You know, everything was fine six yeah. weeks ago. And now look at us. We're prisoners. Well, I mean, it was just on the cusp, wasn't it? We were at a conference yeah. and there were people, we were like, okay, should we be here? Should we not? But I think what happens when, um, you know, when something like this happens of such a magnitude, I don't know that anybody realized actually how big it was certainly mm -hmm. i didn't realize how big it was when you and i were together i'm mm -hmm. interested that you said you know how quickly you've had to respond to things so tell us about some of the pivots that you've made in your business uh, well I, i've got four businesses and the the main one for me that i spend most of my time in these days is actually an events and coaching company well of course events and coaching has had to just stop so there I am with a team of uh, eight people and uh, office premises and a whole schedule, 90 events in a year booked, a big, massive conference at the end of the year with hundreds of people in attendance, exhibitors, deposits paid, everything. And it's just like, no. And it's like a stab in the heart at first. You know, it's the first the first phase you go through is like, what? <laughs> Panic. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. So you just go into this. I, I can't. I'm, everybody must have felt the same. I can't describe the feeling, other than it was just a mixture of just like panic and shock and <gasps> what do we do? And then it's like fight mode kicks in. And I think every entrepreneur must have this. You, you've got to have it to, have, to to started your business and got them off the ground and dealt with the blows that everybody throws at you. And it's just like right, we are not going to rest. And I said, and we have a lot of clients that that pay us for residual coaching and training. I says right, we're going to stop the events. We'll see what we can salvage. We'll see what fees we can get back see what we can cancel do all that sort of thing i says the next thing we've got to do is reserve our existing clients mm -hmm. and i said we have got to go from being a nice to have to being an essential i says they have got to see us that they can't live without us yeah. i said right team this is what we're going to do and we just created this whole like media plan of we were going to be facebook lives we're going to be coaching programs we're going to teach them things they'd ever heard of before we're yeah. gonna, we were going to be the news release every day on the corona lake yeah. and, the yeah. and, everything. and we were just absolutely and and it's just it's just you know it's been amazing to deliver and the feedback from our, our clients has been, I couldn't have done this without you. You've just been there. You've been researching everything for us. We've just had to sit there. And some of the Zoom calls we've had, Sammy, they've been amazing. We've had these Zoom calls with our clients in the middle of Corona, really stressful, 14 days. In, they're in the garden, have a drink, go, okay, yeah, cool, lovely, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've just, like, gone, don't worry, we'll find out, you know, and here's, yeah. here's the letter you need to send to your tenants, and here's the letter you need to send to your landlord. This is what you need to say. This is how you furlough. This is the document. And they're just like, Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Right. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something that naturally kicks in, isn't there? And I want to say oh. shout out to Lubna. Hi, Lubna. The hello to all of you that are joining. Uh, come and say hi. Tell us where in the world you're from you're as, well, as well. It'd be cool to find out where you're coming in from because we're going live via five channels right now. So um, 
I, I think there's something that kicks in as well. Uh, and I think you uh, you and I are very similar. <laughs> we yeah. were, we had this almost like a maternal instinct to really look after and nurture our clients. Kate, hello. Uh, our clients in a way that they're kind of... Um, I don't know, we, we care a lot about our clients. And those of you that are watching, I'm sure that you're the same, otherwise you wouldn't be part of the universe that I play in. Um, and there's something that happens when when something like this of such a magnitude happens. You know, people kept saying to me, Sammy, like, how's, how's business? How's your business? And I said, I, I'm not even concentrating on my business. I, I know that, like, I work with business people and entrepreneurs. If their businesses are strong, then my business is strong. <laughs> so I'm just focusing on the nurturing side of them, making sure that everyone else is okay. And it sounds like you've done exactly the same thing. And whilst ever you're in that service mode, you can't be thinking about you. You haven't got time for woe me. You haven't got time for any of the bullshit that we can make up in ourselves and catches us and, and, and it really it can deter us it can it can set us on a totally different path and i've seen that happen to some people and it it's destroying their brand rather than building it mm. I, I suppose you've maybe seen some of that as well hi facebook user i can't see your name but i know you're in vermont hello um I, that think, might, maybe that I, think, <laughs> I think a lot of people fear kicks in and, and when when fear yeah. kicks in i think the natural reaction to go is to protect and reserve mode so yeah. You, I mean, a lot of people furloughed all of their staff. We chose to keep most of our staff on. So we furloughed two members and we kept the rest because we wanted to serve and deliver. Yeah. So we kept our staff on. And fortunately, we had a residual income from our paying clients that if we kept them happy, then we could continue to do that. And so we absolutely focused on serving and delivering to them and making them our number one focus. And I'll be honest, there was times when I was doing this and I was thinking, I need to look at my own numbers, but I haven't got time. I've just got to do this. I've got to do it again for live. Yeah, I'll have a look in a minute. And and my co-director's door and say, can I borrow a minute to look at cash flow? I'm like, no, I've got to be over here. <laughs> and it, it's absolutely right. And by doing that, out of all the clients that we've got, we've lost one. And he said, I'll be back in three months. I just, common sense, I need to do this. He'll be back. Yeah. We've lost one. And, and, and my original, you know, thought was if we lose half the clients, if we lose it, if we lose it, and we've lost one. And it's just, it, it's, it's fair play to my team, really, just, just absolutely hammering. I mean, we've killed ourselves, you know, we've worked like stink, but, you know, it's been, it's been an amazing thing to do, as well as massively challenging and rewarding. And, and from the client's perspective, they're now like so positive. It's just like, yeah, this is good. such an opportunity to be able to focus on our business. All these ideas you're giving us, Sally, we're putting this marketing team in. There's a list of 10 things we're going to be doing. I was just going to sit back and relax for three weeks, but now I'm on a mission. I'm going to be, and then it's like, you know, Tom Stone is like, I'm the funnel guy. I'm going to change the world with funnels. And yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think we've created some hysteria. It's cool. You really have an amazing team as well. I was fortunate enough to join Sally and her team uh, for dinner while uh, while we were at the event together in Brighton. And it was so awesome to catch up with you, but also to see who's packing your parachute as well. And you know what was really beautiful was that actually there wasn't one person that was that was packing a parachute. You were all packing for each other. Like you were such a tight team and you know how you were um just even uh, supporting people in the room and working the room you know it was like you were all just one even though you weren't together you were you were one heartbeat and i think that's a a massive thing where it comes to even if you don't have your own team even if you work with freelancers and outsourcers i think it's important to still have that feeling of that parachute packing isn't it like what would you say is the most important thing that how have you built that team what's the thing what's the theme the, I think the absolute, the, the big turning point for me in business, I've been in business 30 years, 30 years, full businesses. Oh, you're um, bloody old enough, 30 years. <laughs> 30 years. I, I said when I was 18, I'm now 48. So, or is it 49? 40, 49, I'm 49. Um, so it's 30 years. And I think the big pivot for me, really, in business was understanding the importance of core values. It's one of those things you go, oh, yeah, yeah, core values, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that fluffy thing that you put on a mission statement. That's the one. Um, <laughs> when I actually fully embraced that and started to extract the people that did not have the same core values, because they're the ones that cause the stress and the fractions and stop the team gelling and it splits the team and they're over there talking about those over there. And yeah. so we started to extract those that didn't have the right core values and actually embed 
um, the core values into my recruitment and interviewing and start to reject people, even though they've got the best skills out of all the people I've interviewed, but they did not have the same core values, which is all about serving and helping and caring and nurturing our community. If they don't share those core values, they're not coming in. That's when we saw a shift, a massive shift. And right now we, we had to extract somebody about three weeks ago who got through the process and wasn't right we had to extract fast because you could see the cracks starting to show. It's like, this is not right. So for me, I'd say a big thing was core values, finding out what your thing is. Like you, Sam, your thing is looking after your community. It's looking after your people. It's You're like a, as you use the word mother hen, you're, you're gathering people around you, you're putting my wings around you, and I'm looking after you. And we need people on our team like that, not go, well, how much yeah. money am I gonna make then? What's in it for me? That yeah. they're, they're not the people that you want. So. For me, selecting on core values, we have our core values. They are clear. We have them all over the place. And on interview, our questions are all focused on those core values. Before they even have the proper interview, we have a core value interview for 15 minutes. Brilliant. And if they don't get through that core value fit interview in the first 15 minutes, we won't move to full interview. And uh, it's transformational. And you've and those yeah. the team that you spent time with, two of them moved over 100 miles to actually work with us. I know that that was one of them. Isn't that so well? I mean, one of them she um, she pretty much begged you to work for you, didn't she? That's Kate who's watching. Yeah, she was a nightmare. She, every day she was like, can I have a job? I was like, you live 200 miles away. It doesn't matter, I'll sort it. I said, you've got two young children and a, and, a, and a partner. I don't worry, I'll sort it. I'm like, think about it. Let me know tomorrow. I kind of work here. And I'm like, how, how are you going to get over the kids? Don't worry, we'll sort it. Yes, but what are you going to do? <laughs> so, for three days, but at the end of it, and she's been amazing. And, you know, yeah. and the reason she, she wanted to work for us is because she loved what we were doing. She loved the way we were changing people's lives. We were transforming businesses. We were adding huge amount of value. And she said, I want to be part of that. I don't just want to be doing a thing for a company. I want to be part of yeah. a movement, a change, a, you know, and, and that's what attracted her and most of the team members, to be fair. Yeah, and what a brilliant story, the fact that you've grown based on core values. And, and it's so important. I, re I remember, I think I shared this maybe at an event recently where um, my biz ex-business partner and I, when we bought our two companies together originally in 2007, uh, yeah, 2007 um, that was the first thing we did. And we, we, we just, I mean, it was a pretty um, hefty exercise actually so, and for those of you that are starting in business or you haven't been in business that long um, you could do it right now and it's going to save you a lot of heartache by doing that right now uh, but for us we had established businesses and we bought both those businesses together and the first thing we did was um, print out a list of every single client we were serving and we matched each of them against our three core values what are our top core values and so we started with our number one our number one core value let's see how many of these people have that and of course we didn't phone them up and say what's your core value you just know by the way people treat you you know by the way that people react and respond and, and how they are just it's their being it's who they are and uh, and we went through we ended up only keeping 23 of our clients out of a massive enormous list of hundreds of clients and we focused all of our attention just on those that small number. I mean, my business partner was having a, a, a like epi at the time. He was like, we can't get rid of all those customers. I said, seriously, I promise you, we could get rid of all those customers and get back a massive amount of our time and only focus on this small group of core customers. Mm -hmm. And I bet you that our company will grow. And it tripled it like that because we're in profit from the same customers, from the same customers. And that's the crazy thing is you don't need so many people um, who, you know, just for the money, it, it doesn't work, does it? When you're just doing it for the money, I think the money follows those values. It does, and, and it, exactly. If you if you find a purpose in your business of adding value to other customers, and if they see the value, the, the you will make the money. You don't need to look at it. As I keep saying to my code, I don't need to look at the cash flow. What I'm doing is right. If I keep doing what I'm doing, the money will come. You just take care of that. I'm just going to focus on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it works because they'll want to pay you. They'll want to spend more with you. They'll yeah. want to do more with you. They'll want to whatever. And it's just through adding that value. And I think as a core value – but. The trouble is, if you're not that sort of person, there's no point pretending that's your core right. value. And and I have had people in my team that have pretended that's their core value, and it's absolute rubbish. And well, you, you can find them out. Pardon? You end up finding them out. You, you can't do. Them out for long. 
Absolutely. And it's all they won't do what the customer wants. They won't listen. They won't be part of a team. It's all me, 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 my desk. This is my and it's it just like, wow, how did that get through? And no, it doesn't work. It really doesn't work. And the rest of the team closes in. I mean, I at one stage I had almost mutiny on my hands because there's this one person that needed to be dealt with. The team just closed in because it, they were not prepared to accept it. And so yeah. it's it's more valuable than we think. But I, I don't know why when we first set up in business, and I um, have to be included in this. You don't see it as important. You think, oh, it's something that will come later. But I think it is something you get to later. When you realize it, it's like, wow, what a transformation. <laughs> so, yeah, if you are starting out or early in your journey, just think about it because it is so – what is your core values? Be true yeah. to your core values yeah. and then get a team around you that shares those core values. And it, 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 yeah. when it clicks, it's just like like clockwork and bang, you're off. It is. Amazing. Yeah, it's very exciting. And I love the fact you've touched on values. I love uh, values are such a core part of everything we do in terms of branding. You know, it's, it's got to be after vision. Values is like the number two core thing that you should be focusing on. If you're not quite sure what your values are, you can go to uh, on my website, howtobuildabrand.org. You can go into the startup resources and you can find the values questionnaire, download that, go through that process and then come back into this group. And well, I say into this group, we're going live by five locations come into the the how to build a brand group and share those values so that we can challenge you on them and what i find is most of the time that people go through that kind of activity they they tend to be in their head when they're going through it i don't know if you find that sally they they tend to be so much in their head that it's almost like they're creating them thinking that they can make those values what a customer wants to see but as you said you can't be something you're not so it's really important that you create values that are where there's a match that you are totally you live, breathe, eat, sleep, walk and talk those values. They are who you are. But yeah. likewise, you want to attract other customers like that. So, Sally, let's get into some confessions because we're on the confession show after is all. That what it is? Oh, no. no. <laughs> dang, dang, dang. So, um, so let's talk about a confession, something that you maybe don't share very often where you've been through like a nightmare in your business and you would never, ever, ever do this thing the way you did it again. I think the biggest thing that was a shock for me is there was one period in my life where I followed probably the money mm. rather than what I knew was right. And for me, I decided to go, go down the route of franchising. And I launched that in 2010. And I was a letting agent originally, just to give a bit of backstory, I was a letting agent for 25 years, fully systemized. You know, um, I got all of the badges and awards and everything, most systemized, but whatever. So I thought, right, franchising is the way to go. What a great opportunity. We could grow massively, world domination, make loads of money, business partner comes in. Yeah, we'll do this, whatever. Anyway. I found myself in what I can only describe personally as hell. Yeah. Um, I was stuck in a a very money driven focused business. Now, I, obviously, business is all about money. I love money and love making money as long as it's adding value. But with the franchise world, it's very um, cloak and dagger. It's very smoke and mirrors. And I'll give you an example. If you've got franchisees, and we, we signed up nine franchisees in our first year without any advertising or marketing spend whatsoever. So we flew right out of the, 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 the launch pad. We absolutely rocketed. Then you've got nine franchisees to support. And what they say in the franchising world is two will do really well, two will fail miserably, and there'll be six floating around in the middle somewhere. And as a franchisor, what your job to do is to remove the two that are failing. So you just take their business off them. Just close them down and shut them down. And then you push the ones in the middle to be better. And if not, you get rid of those. You keep removing the lower ones. That really hit me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't think I can do this because I'd literally got to take people's livelihood off them. So what we did as a team is what we always do as a team. We killed ourselves trying to support these people more. So we gave them more training and we helped them more and we nurtured them. We went to their offices and answered the phones for them. We went there and booked the appointments for them. We, we were doing everything. We were kicking ourselves trying to do this. And then, of course, they wanted more and more and more. And then the people at the top were saying, you're not supporting us because you're supporting these. Oh, and I've got ourselves in a pickle. <laughs> because I could not do what that business needed me to do in order to succeed in order to succeed as a franchise or you need to sell as a franchise and quickly eradicate the ones that don't 
uh, yeah. don't succeed. Focus on the ones that do and push, push, push. So my big confession would be before you go into a business, fully understand what is required and whether it fits you. Because I found out, even though I'm exceptional at training and coaching and mentoring, I'm not the sort of person that will pull the rug from under someone's feet. I'll just over deliver and serve more. But what that, but there's always a silver lining to everything, isn't there? And what that franchising world taught me is that I really love training and coaching and nurturing. But what I hate is the nasty side of business. And so I created a training and coaching company where I can just train and coach people. <laughs> <laughs> I Smart. found out what my true value was, but it, 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 I had to go yeah. for the phase of just, I don't like this. I, I just didn't like the industry. It's a tough industry. So, and I wished I'd have known more about what was involved in it, but it's very hard to find out what the truth is because nobody really tells you. So it was a tough one. Very good confession. Very good, good confession. confession. I would it's say true. it's a very good confession. Guys and girls, would you say that's a good confession? I think that's a good confession. And one we haven't heard yet. We've been doing this for a long time. We haven't had that one before. <laughs> and it's a really important one. You know, I, I think um, you know, something that I talk about all the time is, you know, I, I, for the same reasons, really, became very, very ill and almost had a heart attack because I wasn't true to my values, because I was following profit over purpose. And the thing is, when you switch that around and you start following the purpose, what happens is everything starts to fall into an alignment. It was really interesting at the event that you and I were at a few months ago when I said, you know, like raise your hand if you're, um, you know, in business and a lot of people put their hands up, raise your hand if you're new to business and, you know, you're thinking of starting a business, people put their hand up and I said, and raise your hand if you are in business, but you're feeling the calling that you should be going in a different direction. And I was shocked to see that about three quarters of the hands in the audience went up. It was like, wow, wow. And I thought it was just me. <laughs> I was just getting a sense check as to, you know, does anybody else feel this way? But it's amazing that so many entrepreneurs find out what they want to do by learning the hard way what they don't want to do. Mm, it, it is and, it, and it's a valuable lesson but I mean I was you know far too long in the tooth by the time I learned it but it, it but it got me here so I can't really complain but yeah I wish I could have missed that bit out and just gone straight to the coaching and the training but hey ho life is as it is you created yeah. this amazing business because of those mistakes people listen to you because you've you've got the war wounds you know you you've got the the scars the battle scars from having gone through that process and actually by you going through it it builds more trust in you tell us a bit about i know your rainmaker live event that i was so excited to be speaking at it <laughs> i know you're you're pivoting with that event as well um but you know you you've been changing the lives of all of these agents who like you were you know they were going through a massive amount of pain and if you know an agent an estate agent somebody who's in that property industry for those of you that are watching please please put them in touch with sally because her and her business they just transform these businesses it's you know really amazing and sally actually do you work with people all around the world do you work with realtors as well in different countries obviously it has a different name and a different terminology in different parts of the world we're starting to i mean I, obviously we've agent rainmakers only been going for three years and when i first started we were just about to have something called the tenant fee banners a piece of legislation coming in that was going to lose about 25 percent of our revenue oh, wow. that was the real pain point and so i made myself the the voice piece the the the, the, the champion for finding a way for us to replace this 25 percent of revenue so i started interviewing letting agents and say agents all over the country what are they doing what did scotland do when they lost the tenant fee ban three years ago and all this sort of stuff and i started talking and pulling people together i started interviewing everybody finding out whatever and i created all these strategies this six point plan on how we could beat the tenant fee ban and get this 25 percent back what happened was is the people i was coaching in the smaller groups in the first few months which came big groups which then became massive groups um what what happened was they didn't just beat the tenant fee ban 25 percent; they were doubling their turnover and doubling their turnover and quadrupling their turnover and i was like wow this stuff works. so it was just it's just phenomenal i mean we've got i've got one lady sam that has has generated an additional two million in revenue additional two million on top of what she was doing before from what we've taught i've got numerous people done a million half a million quarter million 
Hundreds have done hundreds of thousands. Hundreds, hundreds have done a hundred thousand pound additional revenue from what we've taught them. Bear in mind the average letting agent turns over somewhere between 300 and 500,000. Those are big numbers. Yeah. And so this sort of snowballed. I mean, our, our business, our little agent rainmaker business went to a one and a half million pound turnover within 18 months from nothing absolutely nothing because we were just adding so much value our, our, our fees were going up as we were adding more value we just said well, we'll double how much we're charging for that and people were going yeah have my money take it so yeah. we had to make this money like, got case studies like that i mean the proof is in the pudding isn't it absolutely i mean a few people have said to me yeah, they wish i'd got the, the clients i've got sue that's done the two million they keep saying you keep saying you should have had her on a, a payment like the <laughs> percentage so I, yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's absolutely flu. So um, it's been amazing. And do you know what? These people are so thankful. We hold an award ceremony every year. We had Sally Phillips, the comedian out of, um, oh, I know, various films and things. Uh, she came and awarded all the awards last year. And we right. had a new agent make a live the year before. We have T-shirt, guns, swag. We're throwing stuff at people. <laughs> yeah, I've made this. I've made extra half a million. And then they party and they go wild. So we do this every year. So we've done that last year and we've done that the year before. We got it planned for October this year. We're probably going to do it now in the spring 2021, just in case, because we just don't know yeah, uh, sure. what's going to happen. Um, but it will be on. We'll do it. You have gone virtual with an event. You have an event that's coming up, and uh, I'm very excited to be speaking on that as a little yeah. intro. So, uh, so tell us more about this event. What's happening, and who can okay. get involved? So, we have the Pivot 2020 Summit, and it's Pivot Your Business in 2020. is basically all around. If you have you noticed in the last four or five weeks, I've been five weeks now, six weeks, wherever we're at, but five weeks in, we've all become digital like we're doing yeah. this and you've always done this Sammy but there's so many people doing this now um yeah. when we're going to learn something we're learning online digitally um uh, we're, we're even ordering our food digitally and it's coming to our doors even our moms are zooming us now I mean mothers in their 80s zooming us now I mean that is just unheard of yeah we're still purpose are going digital. <laughs> yeah, they're driving me mad. I live in a little village and all the old people are wandering up and down. And that's so like, you should be indoors, go in. <laughs> But yet the world has changed. And so as business owners, the, the challenge we have is, are, are the, tr the traditional market, I mean, I love marketing. I am a student of marketing. I have been for 10 years. I, I'm absolutely eight hours a day obsessed yeah. with marketing. Anything new, I'm on it. I'm, I'm, happy. Yes, I'm reading yeah. it. I've got the new Russell Brunson Traffic Secrets book. I'll have that read. It came yesterday. I'll have that read by next. I just, I'm obsessed <laughs> with marketing in case anybody hasn't picked that up. And uh, <laughs> the, the challenge is that, all the things that we used to do, and particularly in my real estate industry, they, they still send out leaflets and they still knock on doors right. and they still cold call and they do all these sort of different things. But there's so many industries like that. On a summit I was on last weekend, or two weekends ago actually, a four-day summit, there was a chiropractor that was doing assessments on Zoom. And I'm like, if a chiropractor can do assessments on Zoom, then we all need to be looking at what technology is out there so that we can be better and do better and and, and change our business. So yeah. I thought, right, we're going to do a summit, Sam. Would you come and speak at it? We're doing a three-day online summit with over 24 visionary speakers. They've all been picked because they are leaders in their field, whether it be Instagram ads or whether it be Facebook ads or YouTube pre-roll ads or anything like that. We've got all the people yeah. that are leaders in their field that are visionaries to come and actually talk to us about in business what we need to be doing now, what are options. Because as business owners, if you're just focusing on Facebook, that's a risk. If you're just right. focusing on YouTube, that's a risk. If you're just yeah. still sending leaflets out, that's old hat now. Because I believe at the end of this lockdown period, our customers will be more experienced in things like Zoom and whatever, they'll be expecting to talk to you virtually, not necessarily yeah. physically, and they'll be consuming content and consuming you in a very different way. So we've got to get ready for that. So it's called the Pivot 2020 Summit. Um, Sammy, you've, you've agreed to speak. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, I'll be there. I can't wait. And it's going to be all about how you can absolutely pivot your business to be ready for the new digital world that's going to emerge out the other side. So I'm so excited about it. And and you can tell when anybody talk about marketing, I just <laughs> like that's marketing. You know, the thing is, though, that you're the living proof. I see so many, maybe those of you watching now, like how many of you just in the last two weeks have seen marketing experts popping up or social media experts popping up and like you've never heard of them before and and they're, they're just like coming out of nowhere and 
they're pivoting too. I'm not taking it away from them. They're also pivoting. But when you've got someone in front of you, or many of these visionaries that are on your summit, you know, we, we've been doing millions. We, we've been practicing what we preach and we've been supporting others to do that for a long time. And when we pivot, we can pivot quickly because mm -hmm. we know our stuff. And that's what I love about the experts that you're working with, the experts you attract, and that I love that you are leading from the top. You're not just somebody who's bringing a load of summit uh, speakers together. It's literally here, hey, you know, I'm already doing many multiple seven figures in across all of my businesses in what I'm doing. And it's through marketing and doing it in a strategic way that you've been able to do what you do. And the great thing with marketing is that you can look at the things that are failing and you don't you can just sack them without it being people so you've actually yeah. found I mean, I spend so, niche. <laughs> I spend so much time over in america and talking to the australians <laughs> and just consuming because they're just so far ahead of us it's crazy it's like learn what they're doing and then look at how we can do the same here and i love doing that because then that means my people don't have to bother going to australia and all the expense and flight costs and courses and whatever and just just embed it in their businesses and i think this is an opportunity for a collection of those top experts that i've known for years you've known for years as well bring them together put them on a stage and say come on you've got them all in one place now that's it and I'm, I'm so excited about it. I can't wait. 14, 15, <laughs> I'm and excited about it. May. And everyone's going to give away free stuff as well. So it's going to be yes. awesome. Okay. Give us, um, so that I can put it up on screen now. So give us the dates again. It's the 14th, 15th, 16th of May. Should I get Kate to share the link in the chat as well? Yeah, absolutely. If you yeah. Yeah, send, send it in the chat and also, um, yeah, in the private chat and on the, the chat of the, the Facebook group as well. So um, 14th, 15th, 16th of May. I'm just put it in the private okay. okay and uh carl i won't lie i do get a twitch when i'm looking at marketing is that wrong no we are the twitchers we're the global twitchers carl that we we are we are attracting fellow twitchers <laughs> and those that aren't twitching we'll have you twitching by the end of the summit how about that how's that for a brand promise well i think the thing you know when i, when you said that I was going to come on here I, think, I thought the question you were going to ask me was what's the one thing you wished i'd known before i'd started up all my businesses but you've gone and asked me a different one. For a <laughs> you can still answer that if you want to. Well, well I will, because that what, what I thought I was going to say is that the one thing I didn't realize when I started 30 years ago, when I was 18, it was, you know, everything, you know, everything when you're 18, don't you? I just, you know, I know everything. In fact, I knew absolutely nothing, but I thought I knew everything. What I didn't know is the importance of marketing and having gone through the franchising uh, experience with the franchisees is they didn't really want to learn marketing and so many business owners they are great chiropractors or builders or whatever it is that they do but they're not marketeers right. and it is it is the most important thing in business and okay yes give a great service and core values and everything they are important but you if can't you can't do any of that if people don't know you exist yeah, if you can't market yourself forget it so you've got to be a great marketer. And I think that's the, the one thing that I would say out of, out of all the businesses, they've all succeeded because of the marketing. And never quit. Just keep going. That's so. I read um, Donald Trump's book, actually, which is not a very popular person at the moment, is he? But I read his book a few years ago. And he was so true in that book. And he just said, you will get knocked down, pushed back, beaten up, abused, robbed from, stole from, hated everything. And you just got to keep going. And that is so true. The trolls are out there and they were before social media. They're never going to go away. And sometimes the trolls are in your own family, in your own street. They're people you know. Right. They just try and stop you before you even start. You've just got to keep on going because you don't fail until you quit. So if you never quit, you never <laughs> fail. <laughs> I love oh, that. <laughs> I can imagine that's like a mantra oh. for you. Absolutely, yeah. So it keeps you going, and, and you know, especially if you go through a phase, because this is a phase. This is not going to last. What we're going through right now is not going to last. Uh, people are already planning um, way beyond what you know the next three months, six months, nine months, twelve months. Businesses are changing, and what I love is this conversation about what world do we go back to um you know and what is the world that we're going to create actually you know we, we don't have to wait for someone else to create it for us i believe that small business owners and entrepreneurs we're the ones that are going to create the future we get to create the future
I was actually having the conversation with my husband. We go for a dog walk every morning. It's really nice, actually. I'm really quite enjoying dog walk in the morning. We have a different breakfast every day. It's lovely. And we're having a good old chin wagon. My husband's a real theorist. Off he goes. And it's just like you just listen to him for about half an hour. But he's actually spot on this comment he said this morning. He said, he said, um, have you noticed it's the small business owners that have maneuvered? Mm. The big businesses are furloughed and shut. Yeah. And He's absolutely right if you think about it. The small business owners, they're pivoting on a dime, they're changing, they're adapting, they're saying, This is we're gonna we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. the big companies like they've furloughed all their staff and they've just closed the doors. I think that's fascinating. And mm. I, I yeah, there could be some real big wins in this for the small business <laughs> and the SMEs okay. coming up the other side of this because we are the ones that can adapt. We can adapt if you do adapt, and you know, it, there are yeah. some people that have decided just have a six-week holiday and whatever. What a waste! What a waste. I know. Oh, you sure have a holiday afterwards. Oh, we have got so many funnels in the last three weeks. It's been amazing. <laughs> My team nearly know. dead. I've nearly killed them. <laughs> <laughs> you know They're the beautiful at... thing is though as entrepreneurs and business owners literally we can make a decision in the morning and by the afternoon we can be selling it you know these big companies that like you say they've closed the doors they've furloughed their their teams they've they've gone through this um i, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with the corporate world actually because i can imagine i haven't been in corporate for a long long time but those that i do know that are in the corporate industry there was always this kind of attachment to having to have people in the office. And mm. now I wonder if they're going to get this attachment to, no, no, we don't want people coming in the office. <laughs> we can be more productive when people are working from home. I wonder what that's going to do from mm. a loneliness point of view for teams that are now working on their own from home. I mean, you know, I'm very lucky because I have, I live with my best friend and we live in a, a gorgeous place. But for those people that aren't, and they are literally solo at home and they haven't got work uh, because they've not got that job. Maybe the job was their purpose. Isn't it an interesting time that so mm -hmm. many people are now going to start focusing on their own purpose instead of the purpose of just getting up and going to work and coming back and eating, sleeping, getting up, going to work, coming back, eating, sleeping. Yeah. Isn't it and who knows, who knows what they've been consuming, learning taken on board in the last six weeks I mean, they, they could it's, it's going to be fascinating i think there'll be a lot of employers that realize they don't need as many staff as they've got i mean i'm certainly hearing that in the network it's like we're making more money now than we ever have and we're doing more more business than we ever have and we've got less staff there. And, so, and it's like you can just see the light bulbs just going tick 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 but then yeah. the staff as well are like well actually i'm quite good at doing this and i, I quite like the idea of that and you just think oh god it's going to be a crazy time <laughs> Uh, it is going to be a crazy time. I love that, uh, Carl. I've recorded six new online programs since this shizzle began, and I'm getting lots of dollar from it. Well, I, I love, love it. I love the fact that you're that. You know, I really, really love the fact that I'm hanging around with the most awesome fucking people who are really doing it because they're doing what matters. They're mm. doing what makes a difference, and you are definitely uh, one of the most. I would say. Um, thriving entrepreneurs that I know and get to spend my time with. Someone who doesn't just talk about doing it, but really goes and gets shit done. Mm -hmm. And it's the best living proof of that. I love the fact that you got your two comma club award from Russell Brunson. Oh, that, that was, was it. earlier this year, wasn't it? Or um, I got it early last year, but I didn't pick it up and well, I didn't okay. deliver till the end of last year. And then I went on stage this year to receive it officially and have the photograph. <laughs> um, about a year ago, I got it, but yeah, it's yeah. That's such a buzz, honestly. I want the 10 mil now and the uh, the yeah. 100 mil, of course, you do, of course, of course it, yeah. you do. Just but you know, the thing is, it's not about the money, money, though, is it? I mean, then it's nice to get the trophy, but for you to have received that, that 10 comma club um award, for you to have achieved that, like how many lives will have been impacted as a result of you having yeah. that as a financial recognition of well, I always say one of the things I always say to my people is that I have a 10x rule here at Agent Rainmaker uh, if I can't make you 10 times what you're paying me I will not take the money off you and we will refuse money and so I would like to say out of Sue Gidney's two million she paid me 200,000 but she didn't I think she paid me about 25,000 so I think she owes me a few quid <laughs> That's a but, few cocktails. <laughs> absolutely, but for every for every million I make, then that's somebody else has yeah. made ten, and and that's yeah. how a business should be. That's how a business should yeah. be, and then you can stand yeah. there proudly and say, "I've made this." Because there is a certain for some people, I think there's a shame in saying that you've done well or you've had a million pound for yes. one funnel. But no, not if you've made somebody else ten million, twenty million, or whatever. Right. It is. 
like that's that. a really good that's a good point for us to just um as we start to wrap up that's a good point to go on because um i've seen a lot of people that have dropped their prices during corona i've seen mm -hmm. people that have even say i'm not going to charge you i'm going to do this for free i've seen people do all kinds of crazy stuff that's diminished their value and I think because it's diminished their value, it's diminished their brand. For those people that are really hesitant to charge what they're worth, to charge for their products and services, what would you say to them? Well, I, <laughs> number one, make sure you are adding value, which I'm going to assume that you are adding value. And I think the first thing is to find a way. The big pivotal point for me, and I, I know where they're coming from, because when you first start, you're scared to charge. But as soon as you start to identify the value you're giving, your in your mind, your price will go up. So I think it comes from having a collection mechanism of results from the people you're coaching, serving, or helping. And for us, the big one was that first year when we did a we're running an awards uh, ceremony, and you can enter to say how much you've um, made from what we've taught you. We had 56 entries for the first year of awards of people that had generated more than £100,000. 56 in the first year. We'd only been trading 18 months. And it was just like, what? And so we had some a quarter of a million, some a half a million. We didn't have a million pound one in the first year. But we had 56 entries of people made. And we were like, we're not charging enough. <laughs> and, and some of those people, I mean, we at that time, we had products at £97 uh, for one day and then £4,000 for a four-day, and we had a £12,000 top-line program. So the most we charged anybody was £12,000, and they'd made 150, 250, 500 grand. We're like, this is just crazy. We had some people that had made 140 grand from attending our one day for 97 quid. <laughs> That, that was the real like wow moment for me. I was like, we're charging more, and we went through a period of like we doubled our prices, and then we we sold more. And we thought, okay, so we doubled them again, yeah, and, so and we sold more it because it's a higher price. Yeah, and it was like this is crazy, man. This is crazy. The more we charge, the more they want to sign up. Um, <laughs> but but we had validation and photographs of people made hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, yeah. and we've got validation on steroids coming out of our ears, and it was just. <laughs> it's a, a no-brainer we you know we're, we're getting 50 percent of the people we're talking to signing up with us it's just it's a no-brainer really because if you're a business person and this thing can make you money and the other thing we do as well we do a lot of guarantees and i, I stood on stage last year and sold a twenty-five thousand pound product and i said if you don't make 100 grand this year i'll give you money back they're like really I'm like, yeah i'll give you back if you if you do everything i tell you to do and you don't make 100 grand have your money back i'm signing up well, yeah, because I know this stuff works. If you don't right. do it, that's your problem. But if you do, do it, then fine. So be yeah. confident in what you're doing. Find the proof, the validation, yeah. gather the results, which helps you then get more people sign up, charge more. And, you know, don't be scared to offer a guarantee. People aren't stupid with it at the end of the day. If you're adding value, they'll stay with you. So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting journey. Was that it the is question? Uh, yeah, and a great answer, a brilliant answer. So uh, I, I think we, I, I could just talk to you all day, Sally, but I know <laughs> we've um, we've covered so much in such a short amount of time. Um, let's just do a little quick wrap up on your event again so that we can uh, remind everybody where to go. So it's the Pivot 2020 Summit, 14th, 15th and 16th of May. Um, the, uh, the web address is along the bottom there. So Pivot 2020 hyphen Facebook. So if you get that, um, um, put that into your um, your browser. Go get your ticket right now. Um, Sally, how much is it to attend? Minimum ticket's £95. Then there's a 295 option and a 495 option. So £95 gets you in three days, 24 speakers. So No wow. brainer, isn't it, really? I mean, like you say, if someone's going to go away, if they implement these strategies and they make an extra 100 grand this year, even from a startup business, even if a business has decided, actually, do you know what? Corona's given me the perfect opportunity to just say, fuck it. I, don't, I didn't want that business anyway. It was killing me. I'm going to start about something new. Like before. use this to build the business you do want to have. Absolutely. And I think four or five of the speakers are all talking about funnels. And, you know, my my first my first money for agent remake came from one funnel, just one funnel. And as Russell always yeah. says, you are one funnel away. So if you build one funnel, you should be able to do 100K on that pretty, pretty yeah. easy or even a million in 12 to 18 months. So, yeah. yeah, you get what you take from it at the end of the day, but only if you implement. And uh, that's what yeah. your people are all about, implementation. So I'm sure Absolutely. they will. Absolutely. We're, we're get shit done all yeah. over. Oh, Carl, brilliant, Carl. It would be great to see you there. 
I'm looking forward to seeing all the speakers. And Sally, thank you so much for showing up so fully for, oh. for me, for all of those amazing lives that you're reaching and all the lives that they're going to reach as well as a result of you bringing this together and, and you know and Kate as well I mean what a great asset to have and what a brilliant team you have I can't wait to play more with you um is there anything you would like to wrap up with as we uh, end today's show uh, the only thing I would like to say to anybody in business times get hard but when times get hard you've got to go big when everyone goes small just go big go big don't quit fight carry on and never never say never <laughs> just keep fighting and I think that's the motto for now is just keep going and, and yeah. focus now opportunity is just phenomenal make the most of it we'll never get yeah. time like this again it's amazing nice what a nice thank ending you are a right. family thank you you are a change oh, awesome. thank you <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome um let's make this a, a rainmaker movement this is the time to do it it's your time to shine so uh, i'll look forward to seeing you at the summit if you're going to come, come along i really suggest that you do like i mean where else are you going to learn you can go on google and you can learn this stuff and you can learn this stuff in all little bits and pieces but how do you know that you can trust the information that's there i advise invest in yourself invest in your future invest in the business that you want to build and the, the be the brand that you want to see in the world i look forward to seeing you tomorrow again live at five i have keith leon we were going to go live yesterday didn't quite work out so we'll be live tomorrow at five again same time same place and uh, we're going to be talking about his success strategies how he's built this amazing publishing empire how when he launched his book he had most of the um the experts from the secret all backing his book he's done speaking tours all over the world He's spoken at our Brand Builders Club events all around the world as well. It's going to be such a pleasure to share, share Keith Leon S with you tomorrow in tomorrow's show. So take care. We will see you there. Sally, thank you once again. Sending you big love. And I look forward to seeing you in May. <laughs> I will. I look forward to it. Thank you. Bye, take everybody. Care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>